my brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Amen. And I say that with great excitement, and I hope and I pray that you feel the same way. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, the Lord of lords, is the Lord of life. He has promised each and every one of you eternal life, and he has sealed that promise in his blood. I hope and I pray that this morning that you are holding on to that promise. I hope and I pray this morning that that promise is very precious to you. And I hope this morning to set before you the word of God and the way to confirm that promise in your thinking. To think and to consider with me together from the passage, from the word of God, this great fact that Jesus Christ died for sinners. He gave himself for you. He rose again the third day in order that we might know that our sins are forgiven. Well, what I'd like to ask you to do then in order that this might take place is to take your Bibles and turn uh, in the Bible, turn to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, this morning we're going to be looking at uh, uh, verses uh, 1 through 12. Luke chapter 24, this is again what we might call Luke's account of the resurrection. And there are a number of things that I want you to see from this passage of scripture. Luke chapter 12, verses 1, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. And we'll read that passage of scripture here. Luke chapter 24. Verses 1 through 12. Please hear the word of God. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was, when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again? And they remembered his words. And they returned from the sepulcher and told all things unto the eleven and unto all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran into the sepulchre, and stooping down he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass." Well, let us pray. Our Father and our God, as we come to you this morning, this great morning of, of resurrection, in which we think back on that great event of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask and we pray that you would give to us great grace this morning to open up your word, that our hearts might be encouraged and our faith might be strengthened. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are here today to take a look at the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to know and understand that this resurrection, this fact in human history, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, literally changes everything. You've probably heard a saying like that, this changes everything. Well, the resurrection changes everything. I want you to know and I want you to understand that while you and I here as the people of God are gathered in the name of Christ to rejoice in the resurrection of our Lord, you must understand that the resurrection impacts not only believers, not only you and I who follow the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrection also impacts every human soul. Every person who has ever lived must deal with the resurrected Christ. I say that based on the passage of Scripture in Acts chapter 17 when Paul was preaching there uh, on, Mars, on Mars Hill to, to the Athenians. And he makes mention of the fact that God has determined to judge all of humanity through the man that he has raised up. The resurrection of Jesus Christ means that every individual must deal with this resurrected Savior. There are other things that we see by way of uh, the resurrection and its significance to us. You know and you understand, and I hope you hold to it very closely in your heart, that without the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, there could be, there would be no Christianity, no gospel message. You remember what the Apostle Paul says, you know the words, if, we, if Christ is still in the tomb, we are yet in our sins. If Christ be not risen from the dead, again, we are still in our sins. And so the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is absolutely essential to the whole meaning and the whole focus of what Christianity is. Yes, there's much that we would be able to look at by way of the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, much by way of his moral example, but that's not the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for sinners and that God raised him up from the dead. And so again, this very thing is what we'll take a look at here this morning. 
Other elements about the uh, resurrection that have a great impact on us. Here we are on the first day of the week. Why are we worshiping on the first day of the week? Because it's the day in which our Lord Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. This, again, changes everything you see. Everything is put now in a perspective where Jesus Christ is looked at in a way where he becomes the focus and the center. Jesus Christ, again, is risen from the dead. The resurrection, again, in a very real way, is the, is the validation of everything that Jesus said and did. How do you know that God the Father accepted Jesus Christ by way of his sacrifice? How do you know that God the Father, again, is, uh, is uh, if I can say it this way, is giving his amen to everything that Jesus taught? It's because he raised him from the dead. That's exactly what the Apostle Paul means when he speaks there in Romans chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, how that when God raised him from the dead, he showed him to be the Son of God with power. And so, again, the resurrection is just so foundational to everything that you and I understand by way of the Christian message. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ gives to you and me power to live the Christian life. Do you struggle with remaining sin? Oh, and the power of the resurrected Christ, there is great, there is great grace found. Do you again wonder again what your future might be? I'm saying to you by way of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know what your future will be. I think one of the reasons why so many uh, mock and scoff at the resurrection is because the resurrection speaks against every attempt to say in this life that when you die, all is done. The resurrection shows that that's not the case. And therefore, the resurrection speaks loudly to us on so many different ways. The resurrection, then, in one sense, is the confirmation of what we learned in, in the Old Testament by way of Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, that there will be a resurrection of the just and in the unjust, some, again, being raised to everlasting life, some to everlasting damnation. You see and you understand, by way of the resurrection, death is not the final statement. There's an eternity to be, there's an eternity that we enter into, either eternal life or eternal damnation. Do you see how significant the resurrection is? And I'm bringing each of these points to you by way of the Word of God. I'm making points, again, that can only be substantiated by way of Scripture. And why am I doing that? I'm doing that because I think it reflects a current that we see in this passage of Scripture that must not be overlooked. Obviously, the primary emphasis of Luke chapter 24 and every one of the resurrection accounts is the fact that Jesus Christ was truly raised from the dead. This is the great, this is the great center of gravity of the entire gospel message and of this passage in front of us as well. But there's a current in this passage of Scripture that I don't want you to miss. And the current is essentially this. It is the fact that when the words of our Lord Jesus Christ was brought to the memory of those women who were at the tomb, everything was put in its proper perspective. There they were. They went to the tomb. They were, they were, they, they were in many ways bewildered. They were perplexed, as the scripture says. But when the angels reminded them of the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, the light turned on. There they were again, uh, facing this uncertainty, not knowing what to do, not knowing how they would do it. None of this stopped them because of their love and devotion. But when the words of the Lord Jesus, when they were reminded of the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, this put everything in the perspective. And I'm bringing this up because that reality is still true today. Amen. The words of the Lord Jesus Christ will give you proper perspective in every one of your circumstances, whether you be perplexed, whether you be overwhelmed, whether you be wondering about it in eternity or not, remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this morning, what I want to do is I want to set before you from this passage of Scripture, this call to remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we'll be here today, particularly from the perspective of his resurrection, but we're going to see how that these words and this truth filters out in so many different ways. And so what I want to do here this morning is I want to take a look at the passage of Scripture. As we often do, we'll take a look at it in a number of different points. Uh, number one, we're going to consider uh, the devotion of the women there that morning. This is one of the outstanding features that we see in every one of the resurrection accounts, the devotion and the love that these women had for the Lord Jesus Christ. The next thing I want you to consider with me is we'll consider together the ministry of the angels. And the ministry of the angels is, is instructive. Because I find it very, very interesting, very helpful to know that these angels actually quote the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. The angels' ministry, as it were, was to proclaim the words of Jesus Christ. And you and I, can I say it this way? You and I are never less uh, angelic than, we are, than, when, than when we are setting before individuals the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we'll take a look at the ministry of the angels as well as the devotion of the women. 
And then lastly, we're going to see how that these women go from perplexity of mind to clarity of purpose. No longer are they perplexed after they are reminded of the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have great clarity, and, they, and, and this sends them forth on their way. Well, let's consider then the devotion of the women. Look here in, uh, in uh, Luke chapter 24, uh, verse 1. And now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, begin, uh, bringing spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. Here we see again what ought to be rightly designated as the devotion and the love of these women who were followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of the gospel accounts, uh, gospel accounts, as I have said before, make mention of the women coming. It's very interesting because we see by way of, the, again, the accounts, that the women were really the last at the cross and first at the tomb. There's much to be said by way of their love for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a sense in which whatever bravery they might show, whatever courage they might show in taking a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever uh, they may have by way of uh, uh, nothing being able to stop them, who will open the tomb, who will roll away the stone, none of these things hinder them. Why? Because at the core of who they are, they were affected by this great love for Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, this great love for Jesus Christ is the great motivator of every one of our Christian actions. Without love for Christ, you see, these things of outward religion, they get, they get old very quick. Oh, but to have this true and genuine love for the Lord Jesus Christ. This is, if I can say it this way, this is that first love that Jesus was speaking about there in the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 2, when he spoke to the church at Ephesus. You remember, you've lost your first love. Well, this is what first love looks like. It can't be thwarted from doing, again, what it knows it needs to do in order to honor Christ. Oh, that this love would be in the people of God today. Oh, that this love, again, would be that which moves us and motivates us as it did these women. Amen. And so, again, here we see in these women that great truth of Scripture that their faith was working by love. And because of their love, nothing, again, could keep them from showing to the Lord Jesus Christ that type of affection uh, that he was worthy of. Not only do we have the devotion of the women here, and again, we'll move here kind of quickly. Not only do we have the devotion of the women here this morning, the next thing I want you to see is the ministry of the angels. And this might take us a little bit of time, but I do want to spend some time on this. The ministry of the angels. And here we see this as we go on here in the passage of Scripture. Notice here, uh, verses 2 and following, we read, And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of, of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he, remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Now normally in these sermons from uh, Luke chapter 24, our focus is brought to that question, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Very appropriate. Uh, it's a passage of scripture again that speaks very loudly to us even in our own day we might ask this question about the things that we look to for answers we look for answers in various places do we not and we find again so so often times that the answer isn't there the answer is in Christ why seek ye the living among the dead that's not what I'm developing here today however what I want to develop again is that is that word that the angel speaks uh, to the women when he reminds them, when they remind the women of the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so think of this thing. Think of this. Think of the ministry of angels in general to the Lord Jesus Christ. There they were at his birth, ministering, pro proclaiming his, uh, announcing his birth. There they were when he was in the when he was in the wilderness being tempted, ministering to them, ministering to him. There they were uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, once again ministering to the Lord Jesus Christ. And here they are now again with these women ministering. The ministry of angels. What does it look like? Well, in this particular case, what the ministry of angels looks like is the angel bringing to their mind, the women's mind, the words that our Lord had spoken to them. And the fact that he's bringing this out, I find it very interesting that he does it by way of a quotation. The angel literally quotes the words of the Lord Jesus Christ when he goes on to say how that the Lord, how that Jesus uh, uh, spoke and prophesied that he must suffer many things and be raised the third day. This angel has on his lips the very words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I find this very, very significant. And what... 
we see here is that when the angel brings this to their attention, he almost chides them, does he not? He says, why is it that you don't, do not believe? Have you forgotten the words, in essence, is what the angel is saying. And there's a sense in which we can say this. Our Lord Jesus Christ expects you and I to act believingly upon his words. Our Lord Jesus Christ expects that you and I will take up the very words that he sets before us. Look here again at what we have in the, in the passage of Scripture in verse 7, uh, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. These are the very words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the, and the idea that I want you to see here is this. When these words are spoken, our Lord gave them in such a way as he expected us to believe them and to act upon them. And any time we find ourselves undone in our circumstances, specifically when our Lord Jesus Christ has spoken to those uh, circumstances and made promises in those circumstances, there's a sense in which we're coming way, way short of what our Lord Jesus Christ calls us to. And so the point I want you to see and the point I want you to understand is that these words that the angels uh, make mention of are calling attention to the fact that they should have known and understood these things. Isn't it something of a strange phenomena that we are so quick to forget the words of our Lord Jesus Christ? And this becomes a very important uh, point in, in our sermon here today. We find in other places in Scripture where our Lord is kind of chiding his followers for not remembering his words. We can find it in a number of places. In Mark chapter 8, he asked them the question, how is it that you do, do not yet understand? He asked again the question, why do you not remember? He asked the question, why is your heart yet hardened? And there's a sense in which, even as the people of God, we have difficulty sometimes holding on and letting the Word of God truly sink down into our souls. And because of that, when circumstances arise, we're more prone to forget about what our Lord Jesus said rather than to remember and act on that. Now, I want to bring something out here. Because, again, in one sense, we could talk about how that we are all prone to be dull in our hearing. We're all prone to forgetfulness by way of what the scriptures teach. It's a sad case, but it is, it, it is the fact that so oftentimes we're forgetful of the things that we know. But there's something else, I think, that was impacting these women that I want you to be aware of because I think we can find parallels in our own lives. I think what, part, I think what in part caused these women to be so, uh, uh, so forgetful of the words of the Lord Jesus Christ was because of the, if I can say it this way, because of the spiritual trauma that they experienced at seeing the Lord Jesus Christ put to death on the cross. The events of that past week must have genuinely shaken them. They must have been completely, if I can use the word, discombobulated. They must have felt the, the, the ground falling out from under their feet. And there they were in a situation where so much by way of pressure and so much by way of uncertainty and so much by way of pain was impacting them in such a way that they were unable to fully remember or grasp the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And doesn't that happen to you and me today? Amen. Doesn't, aren't there situations in life where, where the situation in the moment is so overwhelming? We sometimes lose, we lose our bearings. And rather than filtering everything through the promises of Christ and through the word of God, we respond instinctively. Oh, can I say, can I make a, can I make a case at this point or make a point, make a point here that this is why you and I need to have the word of God richly dwelling in us. Amen. There's a sense in which when these things come upon us, if the word of God is fully settled in our mind, richly dwelling within us, we can respond in ways that would be consistent with what Christ calls us to do here. And so I want you to see and I want you to understand here again that these women were under great, great stress. But their devotion brought them to the tomb. I find this, I find this phenomenal. There were these women again under all kind of pressure and all kind of stress. Maybe they were fearful, wondering again, would, would, would there be repercussions for us identifying with Jesus of Nazareth after him just being put to death? They went to the tomb anyway. I really love the idea that they don't even know who's going to roll back the stone. But they go there anyway. They don't know how it's going to get done. In a sense, they're saying this, we'll figure it out when we get there. God will make a way, and God did, didn't he? Amen. And so again, what we find here are these women under this great stress. And because of this, I would suggest to you, this is one of the reasons why they lost sight of the words that our Lord spoke. And what I'm trying to make, what I'm trying to convey this morning is this. I don't want you, either on this resurrection morning, or maybe even on your worst day, to forget the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Christ speaks to you in your situations, and those words of his will guide you and lead you through your times of difficulty. 
And so again, our Lord Jesus Christ, how many times did he, did he make mention of the fact that he was going to go to Jerusalem and die and be, ra and be raised again? In, in the Gospel of Luke, he says it at least twice. In Luke chapter 9, verse 22, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the priests and be slain and raised the third day. Luke 18, he says the same thing. They shall scourge him and put him to death, and, they, and the third day he shall rise again. And this is why our Lord says there later on in the chapter in Luke 24, O oh, fools and slow to believe all that the prophets have said. This idea that this should have been settled in their minds by way of what was happening. But we don't, we don't, we don't blame these women in a sense. We don't point an accusing finger at them because we know what it's like to be in situations where we forget what the scripture teaches. It's a sad thing. And I am in no way asking or expecting that we will live at such a low ebb of our Christian experience that we don't become fully informed as to what the Word of God teaches or that we think it's okay to go through life not remembering the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to see and I want you to understand, we can certainly understand when this happens, can we not? We can see people in very, very difficult situations where the hurt and the pain is so overwhelming they lose sight of the glorious promises of God. Oh, these women, you see how much they, they lost out on by not remembering. But the next thing I want you to see is this, is that the angel's ministry was directly related to the ministry of the word. They quoted the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if I can say it this way, they presented scripture to them. And so these angels, again, what was the content of their ministry? The content of their ministry was the, was the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this, again, is, again, as I said before, this is significant to see. Remember ye not? And then the passage says, and then they remembered. Here the light was turned on. Every time you and I remember that there is a promise of God for a situation we're in, what a glorious thing that it is. Every time you and I are led to, to, over, to, to see beyond our present circumstances and remember a specific word of the promise of Christ, we're better off for it. And I'm saying to you, this is, this is the hallmark of, of, of the faith of, 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 of that resurrection day. These early believers, again, looking to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ as they were reminded by way of the ministry of the angels. And so, again, many things that we can say by way of, well, maybe they were just dull-minded. Maybe they were just spiritually immature. I don't think that that's really appropriate at this moment. These were women who loved Jesus Christ. They were willing, again, to, to face odds. They were willing to overcome uh, difficulties. They, they were, again, as I said before, they were the last at the cross, the, at the cross and, and the first at the tomb. It's beautiful. Where were the men at this moment? Where, where were the apostles? Well, again, we know where the women were. And so I don't want to say these women, oh, they should have known better. Hey, fair enough, we can, we can get there, but that's not what I want to focus on. I want to focus on the fact that these women were in a situation that was understandable, that was so overwhelming. They were completely spiritually uh, confused and discombobulated, as I said before. This passage of Scripture, when it says, and then they remembered the words, it reminds us of another passage of Scripture from Psalm 119, verse 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It gives understanding to the simple. And so there they were again, not out understanding everything that was going on. They were perplexed. Literally, that's what the passage of Scripture says. They were perplexed in this. And yet, when the angel reminds them of what Jesus said, oh, light comes into the situation. My friends, every time we can remind one another of what the Word of God says, we bring light into that situation. Every time you can speak the Word of God into the situation that your friends are in or your families in, you bring light to the situation, you see. You give hope where there seems to be no hope. And so again, this ministry of the angel to the, to the women. And so again, we saw the devotion of the women. We saw the, uh, we, we saw the ministry of the angels. The next thing I want you to consider with me somewhat briefly here is now the, uh, the, the fact that these women go from perplexity to clarity. This is a beautiful thing to see. Because once they are understanding the circumstances that are in front of them, from the perspective of the words that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke, everything changes now. 
Notice again what we see here in the passage of Scripture as we, as we go down in verse 8. And then they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and unto the rest. No longer perplexity, no longer fear, no longer halting. Now they're ready to proclaim the word of God again. Brought light to that situation. And now they are able to be the first proclaimers of the resurrected Christ. This is what the word of God does for us. And I want you to see and I want you to understand that our Lord Jesus Christ, again, is still doing this in the life of, of his people today. When the word of God is combined, again, with our soul and brought together in such a way that it becomes the driving motivation. Oh, what well, witnesses for Christ we will be. And so these women went, as I said before, from perplexity to clarity. They remembered his words. What a blessed thing a sanctified memory is. Isn't it amazing to see how many times in Scripture we're called to remember? Over and over again in the Word of God, we're called to remember the Word, remember the Word, remember the Word. And so again, as I said before, a sanctified memory is a great thing. It's one of the greatest blessings in life to be able to think back and to be able to pull from your mind and from your memory Scriptures that are appropriate to the situation. You see, the angels, they spoke the Word of God to those women. And so, as I said before, once they were perplexed, but now they are certain and excited. And again, verses, uh, verses 8 and following. Now, one more thing I want you to see here. In a, sense, this, this, in a sense, this kind of proves out the point that we're seeing by way of the ministry of the Word. So these women, no longer in perplexity, now having clarity that our Lord Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, even as He promised, they go and they tell the apostles, and isn't it somewhat surprising to see how the, how the apostles respond? Notice in verses 9 through 12. And they returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and unto all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Johanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales. And they believed them not. Now listen to this. And I'm bringing this up. Purposely here, look at that down in verse 12. Then arose Peter and ran into the sepulcher, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. This is the point I want you to see. Here were these women, they had clarity. Here were these women, they had this, uh, this, this, this great boldness now, this great confidence that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. And when they told Peter and the apostles, Peter not able to grasp, or Peter not able to fully believe, sees the evidence of the resurrected Christ and doesn't know what to do with it. It wasn't the case with these women, was it? The entrance of the word of God gave light to these women in clarity and certainty. And when Peter was not able to fully believe or embrace the words that these, that, that these, uh, that these, true, uh, that these true witnesses spoke, it jammed him up. <laughs> And rather than being able to come to a certainty of faith, he was left again in a place of somewhat of confusion. What's the point I'm trying to make? The ministry of the Word of God is vital. Not only to your, spirit, not, not only to your, not only to your ability to embrace in fullness, again, the, resurrect, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, but your ability to embrace the Word of God in its fullness also impacts the way you live. It, it, to, to not embrace the Word with certainty gives great confusion. But to be able to walk through this world knowing that God has given to you light opens up so many things. It gives such certainty. And that's what we're seeing here. Notice these women now, again, from perplexity to clarity. But Peter, when he's, when he's unable to fully embrace the, the, the testimony here, where is he left? He's left in something of uncertainty. Again, as the text here says in verse 12, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And so I'm bringing all these things out because I want you to know and understand that on this glorious day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his words still bring light. His words still give clarity. His words still strengthen faith. And each and every time you and I are in difficult situations, I want you to know and understand that it is the speaking and the giving of the words of Jesus Christ that give light to our situations. And so again, hear the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this leads me to my last point. And my last point is a point of application. And I ask this question. What about you? And what about me? Are we like the women there on that day who come, maybe out of devotion, maybe with uh, some perplexity, maybe with some fear? Is the word of Christ sufficiently being communicated to you this morning? 
to where you now know and understand that this is exactly what Jesus said he would do. He said he would go to Jerusalem and die and be raised again the third day. I want you to understand again that this means so much because it, what it tells us is that everything Jesus Christ spoke will indeed come to pass. And that becomes significant now. Because I want you to hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop and think of these. Stop and think of these. Um, uh, of these matters. Uh, do you remember the words that Jesus spoke to sinners? You might be here this morning under the burden of sin. Do you remember the words that Jesus spoke to sinners? You might think that your sin is so great that you can't do anything by way of being pleasing to God. Do you remember the words that Jesus spoke to sinners? Come unto me, all you who labor and all you who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus Christ has words for sinners. You do well when you remember those words. Do you remember the words that he spoke to his disciples? He says, These things have I spoken unto you that your joy might be full. Are you in this world weighed down with this concern and that concern? I'm saying to you the words of the Lord Jesus Christ are that he has come into this world that your joy might be full. Not a joy that, again, is just something a, a, a false and, and on the surface, but a deep abiding uh, joy that goes down to the very soul. Yes. You see, this yes. is what Jesus Christ has spoken. Do you remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you remember the words that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke at the, book of, at the end of the book of Revelation? When he says this, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to as his work shall be. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. You see, our Lord Jesus Christ is not only raised from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ is coming again in glory. You may think that the way this world is going on, there's no way that that can actually happen. Do you mean that Jesus of Nazareth is going to literally break the clouds and come to earth, return to earth? That's kind of far-fetched, doesn't it? Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm saying to you, in any one of these issues, whether you're here struggling with sin, whether as a believer or unbeliever, remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you're here in life circumstances or weighing you down so great, remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has come that your joy might be full. And when you consider what the future might be, and when you wonder, what will the end of all this be? And what will eternity be for me when I die? Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so why do we bring this all out? Because I want you to see that on this glorious resurrection morning, while rightly we would focus on the great fact of the resurrection, there was a ministry that took place that morning through the instrumentality of angels. A ministry that you and I can be engaged in. It is a ministry of bringing the word of God either to the people of God or to the people of this world, by calling them to remember the words that our Lord spoke. Amen. Amen. My Amen. brothers and sisters, the words that our Lord speaks to you is that you are his beloved. I want you to know and understand, no matter what your spiritual situation is here right now, Jesus Christ is for you. Yes. Should you look to Jesus Christ, for the first time to be saved, or should you renew a commitment previously made? I want you to hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. You see, the Savior will accept you, will bring you to himself. And so it is this resurrected Christ that I present to you. It is this glorious Christ who shall return in glory. It is this Lord Jesus Christ who through the ministry of his word still speaks to souls today. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for these words, but we thank you even more for the resurrection of our dear Savior, who has saved us from our sins and is bringing us home to you. Grant that we might love him even as these women loved him, Father, on that resurrection morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.